Please stand. Remember your mercies, Lord. With your eternal protection, sanctify your people, for whom Christ, your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the... A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance and his form beyond that of the sons of men. So he shall startle many nations Kings shall shut their mouths because of him, for that which had not been told, them that they shall see, and that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before the Lord like a young plant, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty, that we should look at him, 
nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has bore our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that make us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, each has turned to their own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgressions of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence, yet there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. 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 In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Deliver me into your hand. I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O oh Lord, faithful God. Father. Are in your 
enemies and persecutors. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Be strong and let your heart take courage. All you A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. After they had eaten the supper, Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there, there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with the police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they came there with the lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with, him, with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom are you looking for? Jesus of Nazareth. 
I told you that I am he. So, so, if, okay. so if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? The soldiers there, the soldiers, their officer and Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest of that year. Caiaphas was one of what is the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and other disciples followed Jesus since that disciple was known to the high priest. He went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest, but Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out to spoke to the woman who guarded the gate and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? Peter said, I am not. Now the slave and the police here had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter, who was also standing with them, warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied, and that moment the cock crowed. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What act accusations do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. They replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Do you ask this of your own, or did others tell you about me? I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest have handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, 
My kingdom is not from here. So you are a king. You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. What is the truth? After he had said this, Pilate went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not, Not this man, man but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. And the soldiers waved a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! Now they struck him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you, to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to him, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. They, I find no case against him. They answered him, we have a law, and according to the law, that ought to, he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you? and power to crucify you? You would have no power over me unless it had been given up you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself <coughs> against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on his judge's bench at the place called the Stone Payment, in Hebrew, Gabotha. Now it was the day of preparation for Passover, and it was about noon, Pilate said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Crucify him. Pilate asked him, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but the emperor. <coughs> then Pilate handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew called Gogulta. There they crucified him and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the people who read this inscription, because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priest, chief priest of the Jews said to the Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What? Have I written? I have written. Then the soldiers had when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic, 
then now the tunic was seamless woven in one piece from the top so they did they said to one another let us not tear it but cast lots for it to see who will get it this was to fulfill what the scripture says they divided my clothes among themselves and for my clothing they cast lots and that is what the soldiers did meanwhile standing near at the cross of jesus were his mother and his mother's sister mary the wife of clophas and mary magdalene when jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her he said to his mother woman here is your son then he said to the disciple here is your mother and from that hour the disciple took her into his own home after this when jesus knew that all all was now finished in order to fulfill the scripture he said i am thirsty a jar full of sour wine was standing there so they put a sponge full of wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth when jesus had received the wine he said it is finished then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit since it was the day of preparation the jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the sabbath especially because sabbath was a day of great solemnity so they asked pilate to have the legs of of uh, the crucified men broken and the bodies removed then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and the other who had been crucified with him but when they came to jesus they saw that he was already dead they did not break his legs instead one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and at once blood and water came out he who saw this has has testified that you also may believe his testimony is true and he knows that he held, he tells the truth these things occurred so the scripture might be fulfilled none of his bones shall be broken and again another passage of the scripture says they they will look on the one whom they have pierced after these things joseph of arimathea who was a disciple of jesus though secret one because of his fear of the jews asked pilate to have to have to take away the body of jesus pilate gave permission so he came and removed his body nicodemus who was at first came to jesus by night also came bringing mixture of myrrh and aloes weighing about 100 100 weight they took the body of jesus and wrapped it with a with the spices in linen cloths according to the burial custom of the jews now there was a garden in the place where they, he was crucified and in the garden there was a new tomb which no, in which no one had ever been laid and so because it was a jewish day of preparation and the tomb was nearby they laid jesus there please be seated <coughs> F- 
father thomas roshika he was the, he was uh, instrumental in establishing uh, the salt and light tv program he wrote a book the name of the book is the last seven words of jesus last seven words of jesus and today's responsorial psalm is the the last one into your hands i lord into your hands father i commend my spirit the first words words that jesus spoke from the cross is that jesus said father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing jesus although he was he has been he was been going through suffering excruciating pain he was willing to uh, uh, intercede for the people he was willing to intercede and pray for the people who crucified him his prayer is father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing when you look at jesus's life the entire life was for the forgiveness the forgiveness not simply the forgiveness alone forgiveness and consequently the heavenly reward forgiveness of sins and the eternal reward it is jesus's obedience saint paul would say that the heavens or the paradise that was closed because of the disobedience of adam and evil adam and eve and then it is because of jesus's obedience that the paradise was open was open because he jesus did it the penance for all the sins and the disobedience and the the consequence of death is removed from human family jesus's jesus so the the symbolic event that happened during jesus's death is that <clears throat> that the, the curtain in the temple was torn open from top to bottom the the, the holy of holy was was kind of a, a way for the pe- access to the people when the curtain is torn apart meaning that the sanctuary is open for the people me symbolically we are saying that the heaven the door of the heaven that was shut is open because of jesus's obedience and suffering death on the cross that is why jesus said that to the good thief he said when he said lord have mercy on me when you come into your kingdom we heard that that request that during our paschal celebration lord remember me when you come into your kingdom what was the what was the answer you will be with me today in paradise you will be with me today in paradise so we are sure that there is going to be a paradise and there is jesus came to bring open the doors of paradise for us so his his assurance to the good thief that today you will be with me in paradise when we celebrate the eucharist we always pray or say the consecration consecration words over the chalice take this and drink all of you this is the chalice of my blood the blood shed for the forgiveness of sins the blood those who jesus's death was for to bring forgiveness and bring us back to eternal uh, eternal life the whole life of jesus was that whoever came to ask for forgiveness whoever came to ask his help he forgave the sin he forgave the sin of the paralytic he not even uh, he did not even ask son your sins are forgiven they asked his friends asked for healing jesus said your sins are forgiven so forgiveness was his, his way of life 
if you remember the story of the woman caught in adultery what did jesus say they insisted for an answer from him jesus said those who have not sinned throw the first stone and they left and the evangelist particularly mentions that from seniors onwards elders onwards they left because they knew that they are talking not talking to an ordinary person they are talking to jesus and they will be in trouble if they if they happen to throw the stone so they one by left one by one they left and jesus said to the woman daughter nobody condemned you neither am i condemning you go and sin no more so jesus way of life it was a continuous forgiveness forgiveness and we celebrate this forgiveness this forgiveness in our discipleship too we have to be able to forgive when we say it is a good friday yeah, it is better it is my opinion not official teaching it is to, should be called forgiving friday so forgiveness is so important in our christian discipleship jesus once said not seven times 77 times that is the uh, that is the uh, reality of forgiveness of, of that is the thing that when we say that we are in a covenantal relationship covenantal relationship is different from uh, a relationship of uh, uh, a contract contract when you when someone breaks the the terms of the contract the contract becomes null and void whereas covenantal relationship is different if one breaks the terms of the covenant there is tons of opportunity to get reconciled asking sorry so the covenant we are in covenantal relationship with god a covenant we are this this is the the new covenant covenantal relationship with god so whenever we ask god sorry god forgives our sins and that we we celebrate that we celebrate the sacrament of reconciliation and we get the forgiveness if we receive forgiveness then think about the our father we have to forgive the sins of others marriage is also a covenantal relationship marriage is also a covenantal relationship it is not a contract so there is tons of opportunity for asking for sorry and getting forgiven and the responsibility of importance of forgiving forgiving one another and the willingness to get reconciled it is not the forgiveness for the sake of forgiveness alone but it is a forgiveness that leads to it reconciliation and eternal life we thank god for the good friday or forgiving friday for us that we supposing if you think that if god forgives only seven times the whole life span how many times we we have to ask for forgiveness so it is infinite and god's gift of forgiveness is available to all of us we thank god for the gift of forgiveness we thank god for the gift of his son we thank god for the gift of paradise that is promised to everyone that our celebration deep in our faith deep in our relationship deep in our love for god and the importance and real uh, to the realization of the importance of forgiveness in our christian discipleship
Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that leading our life of tranquility, we may glor give we may glorify God the Father Almighty. <coughs> For the sake of your Son, have mercy, Lord. Let us kneel. Almighty, ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory <coughs> to all nations, watch over, <coughs> watch over the works of your mercy that your church spread throughout the world. May persevere with steadfast faith in confessing your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Let us pray most holy father pope francis that our god and lord who chose him for the order of bishops may keep him safe and unharmed for the lord's holy church to govern <laughs> the people of god we praise Almighty ever-living God, I whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed. Hear our humble prayer for, our, for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Let us pray also for Bishop McGratton, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Almighty, ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers, and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people governed by you, their maker, may grow in merit, 
by reason of their faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for our catechumens that our God and Lord may open wide the ears of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness of their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Jesus our Lord. Almighty, ever-living God, who make your church ever-fruitful with the new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens, that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray also for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that God our, our God and Lord may be pleased as they live in truth to gather them together and keep them in, in his one truth. For the sake of your Son, have mercy, Lord. Let us kneel. Almighty, ever-living God, who gathered what is scattered, keep together what you have gathered. Look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first, that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. For the sake of your Son, Let us stand. 
Almighty ever living God who bestowed your promise on Abraham and his descendants graciously hear the prayers of your church that the people who first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord amen Let us pray also for those who do not believe in Christ that enlightened by the Holy Spirit they too may enter on the way of salvation for the sake of your son have mercy Let us stand. Almighty ever living God, grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart they may find the truth that we ourselves be constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world through Christ our lord amen <clears throat> let us pray also for those who acknowledge god that following what is right with us sincerity of heart they may find the way to god himself for the sake of your son have mercy lord let us kneel Almighty ever living God who created all people to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest and grant we pray that despite very harmful obstacle every harmful obstacle all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of good works done by those who believe in you and so in gladness confess you the one true god and father of our human race through christ our lord amen let us pray also for those in public office that our god and lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the truth and peace and freedom of all for the sake of your son have mercy lord let us kneel Almighty ever living God in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of the people look with favor we pray on those who those who govern with authority over us that throughout the world the prosperity of peoples the assurance of peace 
and freedom of religion may through your gift be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Almighty Father, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, grant to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. For the sake of your Son, have mercy, Lord. Let us kneel. Let us stand. Almighty, ever-living God, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice, because in their hour of need, your mercy was at hand. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
The first song is in glory and praise, number 368, Were You There? Next song is in glory and praise, 369, Behold the Wood.
67 or Catholic Book of Worship 378. O sacred head surrounded. song is in glory and praise 594 Jesus Lord
now we have the collection collection for the collection for the holy land good fridays we have a collection and then for the holy land whatever no need to need you have
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. <laughs> Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from distress, all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Christ will bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy for me, protection of my death and healing from me. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our first communion song is in glory and praise, 502 Eucharistic Litany.
The next song is five to five. Our next song is in glory and praise, 525, in Catholic Book and Worship, 603, Gift of Finest Wheat.
let us pray. Almighty, our living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that by partaking in this mystery, we may have life unceasingly devoted to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down for blessing. May the abundant blessing of our Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. There is no formal dismissal. We, we depart in silence. Um, tomorrow we have Mass at 7, that is the Easter Vigil Mass. Let us all depart in silence from the building.